Your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief keeps you informed about what's happening in Annapolis, Anne Arundel County, and Maryland. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and, of course, local weather. Your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Monday, June 14th, 2021. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Hey, not going to complain about the weather this weekend. A wee bit of rain, but all in all, a nice, pleasant one. On Saturday morning, I did the Tour de Talbot, which was a 30-mile bike ride through Easton Oxford Trap and all the little back roads there. And man, we have some beautiful scenery over there, along with some huge farms and some huger, new word, estates. If you ever get a chance to bike over there, I highly recommend it. And a bonus, there are no hills. Well, here we are. It's Monday. I suppose we should get into the news. I'm conflicted on this first story. A former Anne Arundel County police officer was sentenced to 18 months in jail for stealing jewelry and guns from the home of a deceased person he was investigating. Apparently, he took inventory of the home and returned a day later in a police cruiser in uniform to take the property for, quote, safekeeping. Apparently, his safekeeping place was the local pawn shop where he tried to sell the property. In the end, all the property was reclaimed and returned to the family, and he still needs to pay $2,000 in restitution and serve five years probation upon release. As to my conflict, this is a pretty egregious and bold crime and not a momentary lapse of judgment. Remember, he came back the next day. I'm thinking the judge in this instance was a little bit lax. A really tense situation in the overnight garage at BWI on Friday morning Howard County Police was looking for a suspect in a domestic violence situation, and he showed up at the BWI garage. They ended up closing the garage and kept people away as the Maryland Transportation Authority Police engaged in a long standoff. After nearly 10 hours of failed negotiations, the MTA police heard a gunshot, and when they got there, they saw that the suspect had taken his own life. The MTA has not identified the suspect, nor have they released any more details on that one. However, around the corner from BWI, sort of, the Maryland State Police and MOSH, which is the Maryland Occupational Safety and Health, are investigating what they are terming an industrial accident. An SHA truck driver was working on MD-10, which is the Arundel Expressway, at the BNA Boulevard exit. As he walked to the trailer attached to his vehicle, an excavator that was working on the project swung into him, pinning him against the trailer and killing him. The operator of the excavator also sustained injuries that are believed to be non-life-threatening. While this was not an accident involving a motorist, it's probably a good time to remind everyone of the law that you do need to slow down and move a lane away from any work or emergency vehicles that may be parked or working on the side of the road. It's a really dangerous job out there. The speeds are high, and we really need to keep our workers safe. Man, it's a bad news kind of Monday, and this next story takes it a step away from that, but not a huge step. WNAV here in Annapolis is reporting that the families of the victims of the Capitol Gazette shooting in 2018 will be filing a lawsuit in the coming weeks against Tribune Publishing for failure to provide adequate security to its employees. The statute of limitations is three years, which will be on June 28th. Now, Jared Ramos is scheduled to stand trial on June 23rd to determine if he was criminally responsible for the killings. He already pleaded guilty. Ramos had a long-standing grudge with the Capitol, and at one point, they were advised to take out a protective order against Ramos, but management declined to do so. To potentially further complicate things, Tribune was recently acquired by Alden Capital, and they are looking to cut costs and have offered buyouts to non-union employees. The packages are 12 weeks of pay for employees with three or more years of service and an additional week for every year beyond that. And if you have less than three years of service, it would be a eight-week severance package. All right, let's end on a high note today. Out with the old and in with the new. Just three weeks ago, we sent the Naval Academy class of 2021 into the fleet. And at the end of this month, we're going to be welcoming the class of 2025. The plebes will report on two days, June 29th and June 30th, with the oath of office ceremony taking place on the 30th. A preemptive warning, there may be up to 1,200 families in town who are not familiar with Annapolis. Patience will be the key word for those days. And for those that are unaware, this is usually a big family deal. Parents, grandparents, siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, and always girl and boyfriends. So lots of people will be in town. 
Now, I'm not sure what type of access media we'll have this year, but rest assured, if we can be there, we will. It's always a fun day. Hey, welcome, plebes. Welcome the class of 2025. Finally, I hope you caught the local business spotlight we dropped on Saturday with Lisa from Rasa Juice Shop. And more importantly, I hope you had a chance to stop in and support her shop right there on Maryland Avenue. And coming up this Saturday, Anthony Clark and Sean Lynch from Galway Bay and the rest of their restaurants spoke with us. And Anthony actually spilled the beans on a new business coming to Maryland Avenue and a very cool public project he's working on. You want to make sure you catch that one. Drops Saturday at noon. All right, that's it for the news. But first, a quick thank you to the sponsor for this daily news brief, Solar Energy Services up in Millersville, and to the Christine Neidhart team of Northrop Realty, a long and foster company, and to Rehab to Perform, who will be opening up at 1750 Forest Drive very soon. All righty, it's Monday. So we have Ann Alsina from Covington Alsina with your Monday Money Report. And as always, George Young from DCMDVA Weather is here with your locally forecast weather. George, Anne, and the rest are coming up in just about 60 seconds. But first, here's Rick. Hello, energy consumers. This is Rick Peters, president of Solar Energy Services, with your Clean Energy Minute. Does your home experience power outages? Or maybe you're concerned about energy resilience in general. If so, that's another great reason to consider clean, quiet, solar-powered energy with battery backup. You may have heard residential solar adoption has rapidly increased during the pandemic for multiple reasons, and many homeowners, like yourself, are adding battery backup and electric vehicle charging to their solar projects. And with Maryland's Residential Energy Storage Income Tax Credit, along with the federal tax credit for batteries when paired with solar, the economics are quite compelling, and that secure feeling is even better. So whether you're looking for clean energy, energy resilience, or overall peace of mind with solar energy, we can help. To schedule a free solar design, call us today at 410-923-6090 or on the web at solarsaves.net. But hurry, sunshine's a-wasting. Sunshine, sunshine, nothing else can make me feel so fine. When you live near Annapolis, you know how fickle the weather can be. So you need a truly local forecast that's accurate and reliable. Forecast right here in Annapolis. DCMDVA weather is not just for today, but for the rest of the week and the weekend too. Now here's George Young of DCMDVA weather with the weather outlook for today and beyond. Hey everyone, this is George with DCMD VA Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Monday, June 14th. Not a bad weekend for the Annapolis region after some late week rain last week. And while today and tomorrow might bring a bit more rain, the overall setup for the week is a good one. Look for highs today in the mid-80s or so with some p.m. showers and storms possible, especially in the late night and overnight hours into Tuesday morning with rain possibly heavy at times, with skies ultimately clearing by Tuesday afternoon with highs in the low to mid-80s. From there, it's sunshine and 80 degrees for highs Wednesday and Thursday, with more sun in mid to upper 80s Friday, followed by hot weather for the weekend, with upper 80s to low 90s and a small chance of some storms Saturday, followed by sunshine and 85 to 90 on Sunday. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DC MDVA Weather. Make it a great day out there. Stay healthy and be safe, and be sure to get our free app on all of your devices by searching DC MDVA Weather in the Apple or Google App Stores. And also be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and use our website each day by visiting dcmdvaweather.com so you can always stay weather informed. Another moving moment from Christy Neidhart of the Christy Neidhart team from Northrop Realty, a long and foster company. Hi, I'm Christy Neidhart. My team and I often get asked, is now a good time to make a move? The answer is absolutely. With interest rates the lowest they've been in nearly 50 years and inventory in high demand, now is the time to let us earn your trust. Whether you're looking to relocate, downsize, or find the home of your dreams, my team and I will guide you through the process and find exactly what you are looking for. Serving people is a passion of mine, and it's what my team does best. That's the Neidhart difference. That's another moving moment from Christy Neidhart. To get in touch, call 410-295-6579 or visit kn-team.com. That's kn-team.com. You work hard for your money. Is your money working hard for you? Managing and investing, it can be confusing. Ann Alsina, a financial planner from Covington Alsina, has been helping people make sense of it all for over 17 years. Are you ready? Now, here's your Monday Money Report. This is Ann Alsina of Covington Alsina with your Monday Money Report. Last week, the markets were up. 
setting a new high on Thursday before retreating slightly. Initial jobless claims continue to decline. Inflation rose to the highest level since 1991. The Federal Reserve Board of Governors, aka the Fed, meets next week, and we will see if they are intent on holding interest rates at low levels. We've seen inflation in a lot of areas, but one that makes people think there is a bubble is housing. Much like 2004 to 2007, houses are selling in a day or two, with multiple offers for over asking price and escalation clauses. What's different this time around? In the run-up to the 2008-2009 financial crisis, people were given mortgages they really could not afford. No doc loans or mortgages issued on someone claiming an income without any documentation to back it up were prevalent. Negative amortization and interest-only loans were also common. A negative amortization loan is a loan in which you pay a small part of the interest due, usually 1% to 2%, and the remaining interest is added to your principal. So instead of paying down a mortgage, you're actually increasing the amount you owe every month. There are legitimate uses for these loans. Business owners often have the necessary cash flow, but can't show required levels of income. And professional home flippers want to keep their carrying costs low. The banking reforms passed after the financial crisis mean that mortgages today are harder to get. And we are reasonably certain the people taking out these mortgages will, without a significant change in circumstances, be able to afford them. We are also seeing cash purchases. In addition, the majority of homes being purchased are primary residences, not leveraged rental units or homes being flipped. In addition, demographic driven demand and low supply have contributed to price increases. Millennials are reaching the age where they are starting to purchase homes, and housing starts were at a low point. It takes two to three years to get to a point where a builder can begin construction, as they need to purchase land, develop plans, get permits, etc. It takes time to build new homes beyond just the construction you see. The downside to this? Rent is also increasing across the board, impacting lower income workers. Some families are being priced out of the market altogether. And for the first time in 38 years, a majority of Americans surveyed feel that this is a bad time to buy a house. Your takeaway from this? If you're looking to buy a house, don't get caught up in the frenzy and become house rich and cash poor. Consider what you can afford to pay and consider what you really need in a house. Remember that housing costs should generally be no more than 30% of your income. Your action to take this week is a follow-up to last week when I asked you to write down everything you spent. Do that again this week, but stop and think first. Is this something I need? Is this something I want? Is there something I want more? Keep writing down every time you spend money for, but for this week, think about what you're spending. You can always find more financial information and resources on our website at CovingtonAlcina.com and on our Facebook page. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA, SAPC, investment advice offered through Great Valley Advisor Group, or registered investment advisor. Covington Alcina and Great Valley Advisor Group are separate entities from LPL Financial. All performance references, historical ones, no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. The opinions voiced in this show are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which strategies or investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, and financial advisor or tax advisor prior to investing. And if you don't have a financial advisor, come talk to us. This is Ann Alcina with Covington Alcina. Are you an active adult or competitive athlete dealing with an injury keeping you from being at your best? Then Rehab to Perform is here to get you back to your full potential. R2P is a unique fitness-focused physical therapy company with four locations in Maryland. More like a training room and a personal training studio than a medical facility. R2P offers physical therapy for lower back pain, overuse injuries, post-surgery, muscle pulls, chronic pain, and more. R2P also offers rehabilitation for concussions and mild traumatic brain injuries. To learn more, visit Rehab to Perform You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues, this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis and Anne Arundel County. And don't forget about our website, eyeonannapolis.net, where you can find even more information. And make sure you follow us on Facebook at All Annapolis and on Twitter at Eye on Annapolis. This Daily News Brief podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m.